how to make the carry it all bag. This is part of Amber Makes Sewing School, available in two beautiful prints. Use the mindful traditional technique of EPP to make this eye-catching oversized tote. Follow the tutorial and sew along with me. Cutting out. Take out the fabric panel from your kit and start by pressing it. If you have a look at the panel, you can see all the hexes used for the EPP already printed with the quarter of an inch seam allowance added. And the rest of the pieces for the bag are also on there. You've got the side and base gussets, the bag back and the handles as well. And you've also got some spare hexes down the side that you can use for your own makes. Cut around all the pieces for the outer front as one large piece. Don't cut around them individually at this stage, just cut them out as one large piece and then cut around all the other pieces. So you now can see here's all of the pieces for the outer front as one large piece. And then also I've cut out the piece that's for the outer back of the bag and I've pinned the label to the top of it so that I remember which piece is which. The outer side gusset pieces, you can see I've pinned the label to them and the outer base gusset as well. And here are the handles. Remember to pin the labels to the top edge of each and all the, qu the quarter inch seam allowances are all included. And those are the spare hexes you can use for your own makes. Organising the hexes. So take the outer front hexi piece and you now, the hexes have to be joined together in rows and in the order they're printed on the fabric. I found the easiest way to do this was to label the back of the fabric piece in rows. So turn it over to the wrong side and you can easily see the hexes through now on the wrong side and label them in rows. So on the row on the right hand side, label all these A. So I'm starting at the top, A1, A2, A3, and I'm labeling them with an erasable pen within the seam allowance at the top. You can use a pencil if you prefer, but make sure you do that in the seam allowance so it can't be seen. So label all of that row A1 to 6. And then in the top row, you've got a half hexy. So label that one B1. I'm going to put a little arrow so I know which way that one is up. Then B2, B3. And label them all the way down like this. Always put the label at the top of each piece. That way they will be the right way up when you join them together later. So label them all the way down, B5, B6, and then B7 at the bottom. And continue labelling the whole piece like this in rows, and you will have rows A to K. Once you've labelled the whole of the fabric piece, like I've done here, then you can cut them out. So I'm going to start by just cutting roughly round the edge of each row, doing one row at a time. If you, keep, if you always label them in rows and cut them in rows, it helps to keep it organised. You can label them and join them by following the photo, but I find it a lot easier if you have them all labelled in rows like this and then you can see which piece is which. So now I'm just cutting roughly outside all of a row. And now I can turn it over and cut out each hex here at a time. The quarter of an inch seam allowance is printed on them. So you can see that there's plain fabric on the outside of each piece, or you may have printed on some of them, but that is the seam allowance that you will use. So cut around the outer line, just like I'm doing here, of each hexi. Take care that you cut accurately along the line. And then you can see I've cut out A1. Now repeat that to cut out all of the other pieces in the A row and then continue to cut out all the other pieces. So now I've got all of my A pieces, I'm going to pile them one on top of each other in order, but I've got the labels on so I know which one is which. Once you've done that, clip them together and that's all the A pieces cut. Repeat that for the rest of the pieces. Preparing the hexes. The fabric hexes you've cut out now need to be tacked or glued around the paper hexagon shapes. So take the first one and write A1 in the centre of one side, and then take your A1 hexi fabric piece and place it down on top centrally, making sure that the A1 on the paper is facing the same direction as the A1, so they're up right at the top. Now glue or pin the paper hexi centrally onto the fabric shape and then glue it round the edge. So start with one side at a time, put a strip of glue on the paper hexi and fold the fabric round it. Make sure you always work in the same direction so that the 
the fabric sides are facing round. It doesn't matter which direction, as long as it's the same direction. You can tack this if you prefer. Uh, that's the traditional method. Done in exactly the same way, you fold over one side at a time and tack it into place. It's entirely up to you whether you tack or you glue. And then you get round to the final side and tack that. So if you're tacking, then pin it into place. If you're gluing, then you stick it into place. And that's A1 prepared. Repeat that with all the whole hexes. Now, when you get to the half hexes that are top of the odd number, the alternate rows, take your paper hexie and cut it in half. I'm using my rotary cutter here from one corner to the other. If you haven't got a rotary cutter, draw the line in pencil and cut along it. And then that will be two. You'll need five whole hexes to make the ten. Now, take the half hexy piece. So this is B1. So I'm going to write B1 on the paper hexi and I put a little arrow because I want to know which way that faces. And again, glue or pin the paper hexi centrally to the wrong side of the same labelled fabric hexi, making sure the labels face the same direction and place it centrally. Now, the, you either glue or tack the fabric around the paper hexi, half hexi, in exactly the same way. So I'm going to start on the top long edge Put a little bit of glue, fold it over or tack it if you prefer. Turn it round and again, always working in the same direction. You'll get a neater finish if you always work in the same direction with each of them. And the, it, the actual fabric pieces are easier to take the paper out of later. So fold it all round until you reach the final side. And then fold that round. Now, when you finish this, you will see there are little points or ears of fabric sticking above. Don't worry about those and don't cut them off. We'll sort those out later, but leave them in place for now. So that's one half hexy finished. Now, clip them all together in piles. You can see here I've got A pile, B pile, C, D. The alternate piles have those half hexes on them and I've kept them all in order. So I've got all of my piles labelled A to K. Joining the EPP shapes. You now can sew that the hexes together in whatever order you like, but I found it easier to join them in the assembled rows. So take a row and place them all right sides up, making sure they're facing in the right direction and they're in order, going A1 at the top all the way down to A6 at the bottom like I'm doing here and making sure they're the right way up. Now you can join A1 and A2 together. So place the bottom edge of A1 with the top edge of A2, so they're right sides facing. And making sure that the edge matches up, take a clip and clip them together on one side. This just helps to keep it all still while you're sewing. You don't have to do this, but I find it keeps it still. Now they're sewn together with a whip stitch, which is basically just an over sewing stitch. So start off with by securing your thread at one end. I do this by working a few over sewing stitches on top of each other, but you can use a knot and then sew them together. The whip stitch is worked by sewing just into the fabric threads on one EPP shape and into the fabric threads on the other. Try not to sew into the paper hexagon because it makes them easier to remove later. Work your stitches fairly close together so you've got a vertical stitch going from one stitch to the other and then from one hexagon to the other and then a diagonal stitch going across as you can see here. There's a diagonal stitch going across and then a vertical stitch that joins them together. Just pick up one or two fabric threads and stitch them together all the way along. I'm using a milliner's needle to stitch mine. It's a nice long needle, it's very sharp and I find that make it's easier to go through. When you get to the other end, or if you want to finish off your thread, again, work a couple of over sewing stitches and then leave a loop and thread your needle through the loop. That just secures it. And then I work another short stitch just to secure then you can cut off the thread. I've left a little tail of the thread on the other end so I'm just going to trim that off. Now that is A1 joined to A2 as you can see. Next join them in order so you join A3 to the bottom of A2 just like this right sides facing. Again clip them together at one end and then over sew and continue like this until you have sewn the whole of the A row together and they're all in order and all facing the right direction. Now you need to sew the B row and with the B row 
and the alternate rows, you'll find you've got the half hexes. So just turn them round. You've labelled them on the back, so just make sure the labels are facing the right direction so that your hexes are facing the right way. And put them all together. I find it easier to lay them all out in a row and then sew them together. So now we're going to sew B1 to B2. So the bottom of B1 goes to the top of B2. Again, make sure... And you can see here, I've turned it around to make sure it's facing in the right direction. These are joined together in exactly the same way. Clip them together. And then at one end, secure your thread. So what I do when I secure my thread is I leave a little tail. It stops the thread pulling out and then work a few stitches on top of each other you can thread your needle through a loop like you did at the end if you like or just work a few it's important that you keep the ends of these secure because then when you sew the rows together later if the ends aren't secure they might come undone so again work that whip stitch just through the fabric threads and not into the paper you may catch the paper as you're sewing don't worry but just try not to catch too much it's up to you how close you work the stitches together, but it's not an exact science, so just try and keep it even. And then continue like this to make the whole of B row. And then do that to do all of the rows, so you've got all the rows joined together, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J and K. There's all the rows now joined together. All in order. So what you've now got to do is join the rows together. So you can see here, I've put them in order, so I've got A on the left and then B. And I'm going to start by joining the A row to the B row. So place them right sides facing. Again, make sure they're facing the right way up. You can see they nest really nicely together. So I'm joining the right-hand side of the A row to the left-hand side of the B row. Again, put a clip in. Now you can join them when you join your hexes together, you can sew them right to left or left to right. It really depends on your own preference and which order you prefer stitching. I like to start on the right hand side and work along to the left hand side. But some people prefer to do it the other way and it also would depend on whether you're right or left handed. It really doesn't matter though. So again, secure the thread and work those little whip stitches all the way along the edge, just catching a few fabric threads. When you're choosing a thread colour, I try to choose something fairly neutral because with this design, you're, you're joining together different colours. So it's hard to choose a thread that will match. So cho choose something that's fairly neutral or if you're joining shapes that are all the same colour, you can use a matching thread. But just choose something that's not going to show up too much. The little stitches you will be able to see from the right hand side, but not very much of them. And also the beauty of EPP is you should be able to see some stitches because this is a hand stitch technique. And it's nice to be able to see them because then you, it shows that it is a hand stitch and it gives it more of that handmade look. When you get to the end of the first two sides you join together, just to secure it, I like to put my th thread through the loop, my needle through the thread loop, and that just secures it. Then fold it to join the next side together. So we're joining the other end of the A1 to the other side of the B1. Clip them together at the end and then you will need to fold the fabric and the paper shapes so that you've got a nice straight edge to work from. But that's fine because you will obviously unfold it all later, but you won't be able to do it unless you fold them like this. And just work on one side at a time. So you sew one side, secure the thread and then move on to the next side. So now I'm working all the way down that side and continue like that until you've joined the two rows together in a pair. So we've got A1 and B1. Now you can either join C onto this or I actually join my in, in pairs. I joined A to B, C to D, E to F and so on. And then I joined all the pairs together. I found it easier. It was a little bit more manageable. And this is what the finished thing looks like. I've joined all the pairs of rows together and then all the rows together to make one big piece and then it will look just like this and the EPP part of your outer bag front is finished. Once you've finished stitching all the rows give it a press. Now turn it over and remove all the paper pieces. I've removed some of them as I've gone but I've just left a few in to show you. If you've glued them in place just 
peel back the fabric edges and then tear out the paper pieces. If you've caught any of the pieces in your stitching, then you might need to tear out small pieces. If you haven't, then the whole piece will come out. So just peel them back and remove them. If you've tacked your paper hexagons into place, then just take out the top tacking stitches and remove all the paper pieces. Take your time to do this so that you make sure that all the paper pieces are removed, particularly if there's any small pieces left where you've stitched into them. I find it easier to turn it round and pull them out. <clears throat> On the edge pieces, remove those in exactly the same way. Just peel them back, either undo the tacking stitches or peel the fabric off the paper pieces and pull them out. And continue doing this until you've removed all the paper pieces and then give it all a press so that the seam allowances are all facing outwards. Cutting the fabric pieces. You need to trim the outer edge of the EPP finish front so you have straight edges for assembling the bag. The diagram in the instructions shows you exactly where to cut. So on the right hand side you cut off a small piece a quarter of an inch to the right of the K hexes and on the left hand side you cut off a quarter of an inch to the left of the B. But follow the diagram and it will explain exactly where to cut this. I'm just showing you here the pieces I've cut off. On the bottom edges just trim off the ears. Now, the rest of the bag pieces have been printed slightly bigger than you need just so that you can get an accurate fit because when you sew your EPP pieces together and remove all the papers, it can sometimes shrink just a little bit. So we've printed these bigger. So place the EPP front, outer front, on top of the bag back, match up the top raw edges and place it centrally and then trim it to shape. So I've trimmed it down the sides and across the bottom so that the back is exactly the same size as the front and this will give you an accurate finish. So you can see here I've cut it and the back is now exactly the same size as the front. Now the gussets are printed to the correct width but they need trimming to length. So if you take one of the um, outer side gussets it needs to be the same length as the side of the outer back. So the width is correct, you don't need to trim that. But you can see I've had to trim off a little bit so that it matches exactly. And then repeat that with the other side gusset. Trim it so it's exactly the same length. By printing them larger, you will get a more accurate finish. With the base gusset, again, it's the correct width, but you will just need to trim a little bit, like I've done here, off the length so it's exactly the same size. Now you need to cut your lining fabric. So the front and the back linings need to be exactly the same size as the outer back. Just use that as a template because that's a flatter piece of fabric and cut the front lining and the back lining to the same size and then use the gussets for the outers that you've already trimmed as templates for cutting the lining. So you've got the outer base gusset, the lining base gusset. Use the outer side gussets as templates to cut the lining size gusset. So you can see here, these are exactly the same size. And by using these as templates, you can just pin them onto the lining fabric and cut round them. And then you need to cut two pockets. The measurements for the pockets are given in the instructions. You've got a large pocket and a small pocket and both of them need an outer and a lining piece. Quilting the pieces. Adding wadding to your bag, then quilting it will give it extra body and structure. Makes a nice finishing touch, but this is optional. I'm using an H640, which is a fusible fleece or wadding. Place the outer front, the outer back, the two outer side gusset pieces and the outer base gusset right sides up on top of the wadding on the glue side. That's the slightly rougher slide. Press them into place and then cut round them. If you're using non-fusible wadding, then tack them. You can then quilt through all the layers. So you can see for the outer front, I've quilted around the flower shapes, but you can quilt them exactly how you want. For the outer back, I've quilted around some of the flower shapes, but you can choose. You can quilt around each of the hexagons or you can quilt horizontal or vertical lines or just choose your own pattern. For the side gussets and the base gusset, I've quilted just horizontal lines across it. It gives some extra detail, makes it more structured and holds everything into place nicely. Making the gusset. 
To give the bag extra depth, a gusset is sewn between the outer front and the outer back, but you need to assemble the gusset loop first. So take the outer base gusset and on the right hand side of it, join it to the left hand side of one of the outer side gussets. Place them right sides facing along those short edges. Then pin them together. Make sure the raw edges are matching up at the ends and across the top and the bottom. Now to make joining the gusset to the outer front and back easier, we're going to start and stop stitching a quarter of an inch from each end. So measure and mark a quarter of an inch from the top, I'm just using an erasable pen for this, you could use a pencil, and a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. Now stitch them together between these two lines, don't stitch beyond those quarter of an inch marks. Press the seam open and you can see here that I've left the quarter of an inch unstitched at the top and bottom. Now join the other outer side gusset to the other end of the outer base gusset. Place them right sides facing. And pin together. So remember you are joining them so it, there's the side gusset, then the base, then the sides so that they are in one long line. <clears throat> pin them together and again mark a quarter of an inch from either end. Then once you've done that, sew together starting and stopping at the marks, just like you did last time. Press the seam open and you can see I've left the quarter of an inch unstitched. This completes the gusset strip loop that will be used to join to the outer front and the outer back. Assembling the bag outer. Take the bag front outer, which is what the EPP piece, and then take one long edge of one of the side gussets, part of the gusset strip loop, and place it right sides facing on top, so matching the right hand side of the outer front with the left hand side of the side gusset. Match up the top edge so that you're matching the long edges and the short edges. I'm going to pop another pin in just to keep that steady. And then at the other end, match up the pressed open seam allowance of the gusset strip. So the right hand raw edge of that seam allowance is, matches up with the bottom edge of the outer front. Match it up exactly and then pin into place. Because of the wadding, sometimes the seam allowance opens a bit. So I like to place two pins. They hold the gusset to the outer front, but it also keeps the seam allowance open, which you need because you're not going to stitch right to the end of this. Once you've pinned at the top and the bottom, pin between, making sure that the raw edges of the gusset strip match up with the raw edges of the outer front. Now sew together starting at the top but finishing on the seam. Don't stitch beyond the seam because you need to leave a quarter of an inch unstitched at the bottom. So you can see here that that section is unstitched. Now fold the gusset strip round so that the base gusset is laying along the bottom of the outer front. Pin it together at the right hand side. Again open up the seam so that the right raw edge of the seam allowance matches up with the side of the outer front as you can see here. So that seam basically is quarter of an inch before the end of the corner of the bottom edge of the outer front. So again Pin both seam allowances into place. This holds them open and it makes it easier to see where you need to stop stitching. Once you've pinned that end, you can then pin between. So if you look at the end that you stitched, you've just stitched on, you can see because you left quarter of an inch unstitched, that's forming a nice neat right angle. By leaving this bit unstitched, it just makes a neater finish. And it will go around the corner better and your finished bag will have nice neat right angle corners. If you don't leave the quarter of an inch stitched, inch unstitched it's quite hard to get the gusset to go neatly round the bottom of the bag. So this is just a little trick that will just help you to get neater edges and it helps with sewing as well. So pin it together all the way along the bottom. Again make sure that you match up the raw edges as you're doing that. And then once that's done, sew into place, starting at one end, sew all the way along the bottom and stop exactly on that seam. Don't stitch beyond it. Once that's done, you can see the base is now stitched on 
and I've left that quarter of an inch unstitched. So you can now fold the other outer side gusset round the left hand side of the outer front. Start by pinning the top edge, making sure that the long and the side raw edges match up. So pin them carefully into place and then you can pin between them. You can see here, because I stopped stitching quarter of an inch before the end, I've got a little square left, a nice right angle turn. So pin together at that end and then making sure that the raw edges match up. Pin between the ends. Now stitch together from one side all the way up to the other end. And now you've joined the gusset strip to the outer front of the bag. And it will look like this. Now at this stage, press these seams open and flat. It's easier to do that before you join the outer back into place. So just put them on your ironing board and press the seams open and flat. Take care that you don't melt the wadding and you can put a pressing cloth on top if you want. This is what it will look like when you've pressed the seams open. Now take the outer back piece and place that gusset right sides down on top. So you need to match the edge of the gusset to the right hand edge of the outer front. Now the outer back is joined to the gusset in exactly the same way as you did with the outer front. So pin it together at the top and then pin it together at the other end again making sure that that seam is a quarter of an inch before the end of the outer front. Pin the seam allowances open and flat to make it easier to see you can see where to stop stitching because you always need to stop stitching a quarter of inch before the end exactly on the seam and then you can pin together between now stitch together down the side and in the same way as the outer front stop stitching repin it and stitch along the base stop stitching repin and go up the other side in exactly the same way. Now that's the outer complete. Again, press the seams open of the back. And then once you've pressed them open, turn the whole outer bag right sides out. Push out the corners and you can see you've got nice, neat right angle corners because you stopped stitching quarter of an inch before the end. So push out the corners. You can just do that with your fingers. And now take a little bit of time to press. If you do this before you add the lining, it's a lot easier. So fold the sides, each of the sides flat and press them so that the seam is laying right on the edge. Once you've done that, it will look like this. It just gives a little bit more structure if you press it at this side so that the seams are laying right on the edge of the side gussets and do this on both the front seams and the back seams. Making the pockets. Place the large pocket outer and the large pocket lining right sides facing. They're exactly the same size, so match up all the raw edges and pin them together. With the plain fabric like this, you don't need to worry about the right side and the wrong side because they're the same. But if you're using a print fabric or a different sort of fabric, then do make sure that they're right sides facing. I've just used a plain cotton fabric for my lining and all my pockets as well. So just move the top layer and the base layer just to make sure that they're matching up. I like to pin them together at the corners and then pin between just to make sure everything is matching up nicely. Now you need to leave a turning gap in the bottom, in the centre of the bottom edge. So fold the bottom edge in half just to find the centre and then if you measure one inch either side of this, that leaves a two inch turning gap. I've marked that with a pen, but you can use pins if you prefer. 
just to mark that turning gap so you remember to leave it unstitched. Now stitch the two pieces together, starting at one turning gap, working all the way around the edge and finishing stitching at the other turning gap. And then it will look like this. Now clip off the corners. This is because you want nice, neat right angle corners. And by removing the bulk of the fabric in this area, you'll just get a neater finish when you turn the whole pocket right sides out. Now fold the top edge of the top seam allowance over and press it into place. By doing this, it really helps to get the seams to lay on the edge when you turn it right sides out. When you get to the turning gap part, fold the top edge one side of the seam allowance over and then flip it over and turn the other side of the seam allowance over just because this then holds the turning gap to the inside. Once you've pressed the seam allowances over to one side all round, then you can open up the turning gap. So put your fingers between inside the turning gap, grab hold of one of the corners and turn the whole pocket right sides out through the gap that you've left. Push it all right sides out and then push your fingers into the corners just to make sure the whole thing is right sides out and then the corners are lying in the corners. Now once you've got the corners out, use a, something to just push them out. I'm using the stick for my turning tool, but use something that's not too pointy because you don't want to split the seams or break through the fabric. But if you push the fabric onto the tool rather than the tool into the fabric, you're less likely to break through it. Now lay it out flat and roll the seam allowance, the seams so they're right on the edge and give it a press and then top stitch along the top edge of the pocket. And then it will look like this. It's all nicely pressed and you've got that top stitch edge. Now the small pocket is made in exactly the same way. So take the small pocket outer and the small pocket lining, place them right sides facing, stitch together, leaving a two inch turning gap unstitched in the bottom straight edge. You can see I've folded all my seam allowances over to one side and I'm just going to clip off the corners and then once that's done I can turn the pocket right sides out through the turning gap in exactly the same way as I did with the large pocket. The easiest way to do that is to put your fingers inside and grab hold of a corner in the other end and then you can pull it through. It's easier to do that than turning it right sides out just in as it goes. It's better to grab hold of a corner. It just comes out better, I think. And then push out the corners with your fingers. And again, I'm going to use my rounded end stick just to push out those corners so that they're nice and right angled and crisp on the edges. Once that's done, give the whole pocket a press so that the seams lay right on the edge and top stitch along the top edge. That just neatens it and holds the pocket flat. And there's your small pocket finished and your large pocket. Attaching the pockets. Take the lining back and fold it in half to find the centre. You're looking for the centre of the long edge because the top of the pot of the back line is the longer edge. Fold that in half to find the centre and just mark that with a pin. Now take your large pocket and fold that in half to find the centre. Just make a little crease. I'm going to put a pin in there just so I remember where it is. Now match up those creases and then that will make the pocket central across. The top of the pocket needs to be two and a half inches down from the top raw edge of the back lining. So mark that and then making sure that the pocket is central by matching up those fold central lines you've just placed in. Then just measure either side. If you make sure that it's two and a half inches on the right and two and a half inches in the left, then you can just adjust it to make sure it's straight like I'm doing here. Once you're happy it's straight and it's two and a half inches down from the top, then pin the pocket in place to the lining down one side and then across the bottom and up the other side. Now 
Make sure it all stays nice and flat while you're pinning. And then your pocket will lay flat on your lining. Once that's done, sew the pocket in place just by top stitching down the side, across the bottom and up the si other side. And that will hold the turning gap closed at the same time. And then your pocket will look like this. Now you can stitch dividing lines into your pocket, but as many as you want, depending on what you want to store in it. I'm just going to put one dividing line down the centre. So measure halfway or depending on how many pockets you you want, just measure them equally and then measure the same distance at the bottom. So I'm just measuring halfway at the top and halfway at the bottom and then take a ruler and join up those lines using a erasable pen and then you can press it off afterwards. Now just pin either side of that drawn line at the top so that when you sew it on, the pocket stays flat whilst it's under your machine. Now for strength, start at the bottom, sew all the way to the top, pivot with your needle and sew back down again and reverse stitch. This will make the top of the pocket stronger because you're not having got any starting or finishing there, it's just one thread and it will make the pocket more secure. Now attach the small pocket to the lining front. Again, fold the lining in half to find the centre of the top long edge. If you match up the raw short edges, you'll be able to do that. Make a little crease. And then take your small pocket and fold it in half to find the centre, make a little crease and place it on top. Again, measure two and a half inches down from the top raw edge of the lining piece and make sure the top of the pocket is at that two and a half inch mark and then pin it into place making sure it stays nice and flat. Pin it down the sides and then across the bottom. You can now sew this pocket in the same way as you did with a large pocket by stitching down the side, across the bottom and up the other side just with a top stitch and this will hold the turning gap closed and there's your small pocket attached to the other piece of the lining. Assembling the bag lining. The bag lining is sewn together in exactly the same way as the bag outer. Start by joining together the side lining side gusset pieces and the base gusset piece in the same way as you did with the outer so that they are joined side base side. Pin together at the short ends and measure and mark a quarter of an inch from the top and quarter of an inch from the bottom so that you leave these unstitched. Again, these are joined together in the same way as you did with the outer. So stitch between those quarter of an inch marks. And then join the other side gusset to the other end of the base gusset. So it's identical to the outer gusset. Remember to start and stop stitching a quarter of an inch before and after before each end. I always like to mark these and measure them because although sometimes you think you can just guess it, it's more accurate if you mark it and then sew between those two marks. So that's the whole lining gusset strip and you can see I've left quarter of an inch unstitched at the top and bottom of each seam. Don't forget to press the seams open. Now take the bag lining, so I'm going to start with the lining front and place the gusset right sides facing on top and sew it together in the same way as you did with the outer. Pin it together at the top edge so that the raw edges are matching and then at the bottom edge so that the right hand seam raw edge of the seam allowance matches up with the bottom of the bag and then pin together between those two pins making sure that the raw edges are matching up. Now sew together starting from the top and finishing at that seam. Once you've done that take it out from under your machine and sew it together along the bottom edge starting stopping quarter of an inch before the end and sew it back up the other side. So now you've joined the lining front to the gusset. So take the lining back and sew one side gusset into place in the same way down the side making sure that you place them right sides facing
and then sew to pin together at the top and then at the bottom. Now we're going to sew the back in exactly the same way as we did with the front, but we need to leave a turning gap in the bottom of the bottom edge. So don't sew it all the way around as you did with the front. Sew this side first. Make sure that you pin those seam allowances open. It's a lot easier now with the lining because there isn't the wadding in place, so they stay flat a, a little bit more easily. The pin together between the top and the bottom pins. Now stitch together from the top and again stopping exactly on that seam that's quarter of an inch before the end, just like you've all you've done with all the other pieces. And then pin the base gusset to the bottom edge of the lining back. Again, match up the right raw edge of the seam allowance to the right side of the bag. Pin both seam allowances into place just to hold them flat so it's easier to see where to stop stitching. Fold that right angle corner just like you've done with all the others over and pin it into place. Then making sure the raw edges are matching up of the bottom edge of the base gusset with the bottom edge of the back lining. just pin it into place. I find it easier when I'm measuring and marking a turning gap to pin the whole side into place first, even at the turning gap. Everything lies nice and flat then because you can make sure the ends meet up and the raw edges meet up. Now once you've done that you need to find the centre of this edge so if you fold it in half so that the seams match up at the ends then pop a pin where the centre is. You can measure this if you prefer to find the centre, either or you can mark it or you can measure it, fold it or measure it. Now you need to leave a six inch turning gap in the bottom of this lining. So mark and me measure and mark three inches either side of the centre point that you've either folded to find or measured to find and place vertical pins or you can mark them with a pen so that you remember where the turning gap is. Now to sew this into place, start on the left hand side, stop on one side of the turning gap, start on the other side of the turning gap and stop on the other side and then sew it together up the other side. Don't forget to reverse stitch either sides of that turning gap so it's nice and secure. Now fold the seam allowances over to one side and press and then you can then press them open as well. When you get to the bottom, you'll probably have to fold them over to one side, but on the sides you can press them open and make sure that the edges of the turning gap are pressed over to the wrong side as well. That just helps with sewing it closed. Making the handles. Take one of the handle pieces, you can remove the label now, and fold it in half so that it's right sides facing and so that you match the long raw edges and pin together. Because this is a long strip, I like to pin together one end and then the other end. Because sometimes when you're folding in half, one end, one side can shift over a bit. So to make sure that the side raw edges match, pin at one end and then the other end. And then you can pin between. So just fold it over. You can either press it and fold it or just fold it with your fingers. And then just pin it together just to hold those raw edges together. So I like to pin a little about halfway along and then I start back at the other end. It just stops it twisting, particularly with a long piece of fabric. Sometimes you get to the other end and one end is short, the short edges aren't matching up. But if you do it this way, you can you get a more accurate finish. Once you've done that, sew it together all the way along the long edge, leaving the short edges open. Now you need to press the seam open and flat. This helps the seam to lay on the edge later. And then because I'm going to use a turning tube, I've tacked the one end closed. Push the turning tube inside. Take the stick that comes with the turning tube and push it all the way through. If you don't have a turning tube, then you just have to turn it right sides out. It takes a little longer. This is just a quicker way to do it. Remove the turning tube and then you can remove the stick. And then your handle is very quickly and easily turned right sides out. Now, just remember to remove the tacking stitches that you put in the end, other end. If you always use the longest tacking stitch you've got, I use tack on my machine using the longest stitch, or you can tack it by hand. It's just quicker to remove the stitches at this stage. So pull out all of those threads. 
Now, once that's done, press the handle so the seam either lies right on the edge or you can have it lying down the centre of the back. It depends on which part of the print and which design you're making. Once you've pressed it flat, top stitch down both long edges to neaten and then repeat this to make the other handle in exactly the same way. Attaching the handles. Take the bag out of front and lay it right sides up so that you've got the seam that's joining the front to the side gusset on the left hand side just laying on the top. Now measure five inches inwards from that seam at the top of the outer front and then measure five inches inwards a little bit further down, about a couple of inches further down and just push the pins in to hold. Now take one of the handles and lay it right sides down on top so that the left edge matches up with those pins. The top edge of the handle needs to extend a half an inch above the top raw edge of the bag. This makes it more secure as it's less likely to pull out. Now pin the handle into place at the top. Just make sure, put your hands underneath to make sure you're only pinning through the front of the bag. And then pin it into place at that second pin a bit further down. This second pin is to keep it straight during assembly and the tacking stitches in the second pin will be removed later. Now on the right hand side, Measure five inches inwards from the seam that joins the outer front to the side gusset and mark that with a pin. And then same way as before, five inches inwards, a couple of inches down and mark that with a pin. Now run the handle through your fingers to make sure it's not twisted and place the other end right sides down on top so the right hand edge of the handle matches up with those pins. Again, measure it to make sure it extends a half an inch above and pin it into place. When you're carrying your bag, if you pin and sew the handle right on the edge, it can pull through the fabric threads and the handle will come off. By extending it half an inch above, it makes it more secure and less likely to come out. So once you've pinned the handle into place five inches in from the side seams, tack it in place across the top and then further down at the second pin. Use the longest tacking stitch on your machine and for the top tacking stitch, do that within the seam allowance, then you won't need to remove these, only the second row. Repeat that to pin and tack the other handle to the back of the bag in exactly the same measurements. Assembling the bag. Make sure the bag outer is right sides out and the bag lining is wrong sides out. So you need to place the bag outer inside the bag lining. So just fold it in half, making sure the handle's on the inside and place the lining inside the outer. Make sure the front outer and the front lining are touching and then rearrange it so that the side seams that join the gussets into place are matching up. So you've now got the outer and the lining right sides facing and match up the seams that are joining the gussets. So make sure those seams are pressed open or hold them open. With the outer, the wadding sometimes just closes it a bit. So although you've pressed it open before, just open it up with your fingers. Make sure those seams match up exactly by rolling them on top of each other and then pin together. And then take the other side gusset seam, again, open up the seam allowance. Place the seams on top of each other and pin together. And then you can pin together between those side seams. And then work around to the other side gusset on the other side of the bag. And again, match and pin up these side seams. It's always better to do this because then you know everything will sit exactly. You need the lining to be sitting perfectly inside the outer so by matching up the side seams it will sit in the right place. So anchor it by pinning together on that side gusset seam and then on the other one. Try and make sure those seams are matching just for a neater finish and then you can pin together between those side gusset seams. It's really important that you make sure that the raw edge of the lining and the raw edge of the outer meets up. Now you can pin together between those. Make sure the handle is facing downwards so that the loop part of it doesn't get caught in the seam and pin together between the side gussets. Make sure the raw edges are matching all the way around the top and that it's nice and even. The lining and the outer is exactly the same size so it will fit really nicely so just pin it together. You can see that the ends of the handles are extending half an inch above the raw edge, which we did earlier just to make them extra secure. Now you've pinned together along one side, 
So do the same on the other side, working round, putting in as many pins as you want, but just making sure that the two pieces, the lining and the outer pieces, are laying flat together and that the raw edges are matching. Once you've finished pinning it together, then you can sew the lining to the outer all the way around the top edge, reverse stitching to finish. So stitch them together and then it will look like this. So the lining is now joined to the outer. Pull the two pieces apart and keep them wrong sides out for the moment. And then the seam that you've just sewn, press that open. This seam will be lying on right on the top edge of the bag later when you turn it right sides out. So by pressing it open at this stage, it makes it easier to get that seam laying on the top and you will get a neater finish as well. So do take the time to open it all up and press it open. Then that once you've done that, do that all the way around. Now, here's an extra little tip I didn't put in the instructions, but I thought I'd show you in the tutorial. In order to anchor the lining inside the outer, this is a really easy way to do it so that the lining doesn't come out. So take one outer seam on the bottom of the gussets and the line, follow it with your finger, finger so you find the opposite lining seam, as you can see here, and place them together, placing the lining on top of the outer. So these are the seams that are joining the side gussets to the base gussets and pin them together. Now, because of where you've stitched the corners, you won't be able to pin them all the way to the edge. You'll be able to pin them about an inch from the edge. So make sure the raw edges are matching up of these side gusset, base gusset seams and pin together. And then sew together between those pins, but inside the seam allowance. So just about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And it will look like this. So you can see I've just anchored the lining. Now let's do the other corner in the same way. So take the outer corner and follow it along with your finger to find the lining corner. So that's the seam joining the side to the base gusset. Place them on top of each other and match up the raw edges, making sure that the seams, all the seams match up. And again, Pin about an inch in from that side. You won't be able to pin all the way to the side. Now, by doing this, this anchors the lining inside the outer and it stops it getting pulled out. And not only that, it also gives a bit more structure to the bag because the lining is sitting right in the corners. So once you've pinned it into place, sew it. Remember, sew within the seam allowance so that this seam doesn't interfere with the gusset seams. So now you can see I've anchored those corners. I can now turn the bag right sides out through the turning gap. So if you don't want to do the anchoring, then just skip that step and turn the bag right sides out through the turning gap. Do it slowly and gently. The six inch gap that you left is enough to be able to pull it out, but don't pull it out too quickly or you might split some of the stitches. Once it's all pulled out, then you can take the turning gap And although you've pressed the edges under, you might need to repress them because sometimes they come unfolded when you're turning through. So repress them if they've become unfolded. They're making sure they're folded under, matching up the folded under edge to the turning gap on either side, pin it together and then sew it together. Now you can either top stitch by machine, which is a much quicker finish, or for a flatter finish, slip stitch it together by hand. It's entirely up to you. Just make sure it's nice and secure. So stitch that together and then it will look like this and you've closed the turning gap. Now you can push the lining into the outer. And if you have sewn those two seams at the bottom of the gusset, the lining to the outer, it will stay inside really nicely. So just push all the corners out. If you haven't done that, then the lining will just be a bit looser inside. So push it all out. The aim here is you need the seam that joins the outer to lining the, along the top to lay right on the tap edge. So by pushing the lining right inside the outer, it holds the lining inside and makes this a bit easier to do. Remove the tacking stitches, the second row that you put in the handles to just keep them straight because the handles need to be facing upwards at this stage. So just remove those tacking stitches. I'm just using a seam ripper to do that. Now 
The other tacking stitches will have been worked within the seam allowance, so you won't need to remove these. Now roll that top seam between your fingers, the seam that's joining the lining to the outer, making sure the handle's facing upwards. Press it all the way along so that the seam lays right on the edge. You don't really want to be seeing any of the lining from the outer side. So just roll it over so that the lining is lying right inside and press it all the way around in the same way. Once you've pressed it all the way around so that it's nice and neat, you can then top stitch all the way around the top edge of the bag. That holds the lining neatly inside and it also adds a bit of a decoration to the top of the bag and it gives it a more professional finish. Then it will look like this. I did my top stitch a quarter of an inch from the top so you can see everything is lying nicely inside. You've got the two pockets, the small pocket and the large pocket. And the lining is fixed to the seams at the bottom, which holds it really neatly inside. So now your beautiful big carry-it-all bag is ready and finished. <laughs>